finalize the image, we can take advantage of a few tools that really add style. One of the things to consider is a new addition to Aurora 2019, and that's LUT mapping. Now, you can click on here and choose Load LUT if you want to choose a custom LUT that you've created or downloaded, or take a look at some of the built-in ones. Notice that these really change the mood. Now, don't feel like you have to use these at their full intense values. In this case, I like Glorious. And Noble was also nice, but a bit bright. So let's choose Glorious, and it's applied. And then, using the Amount slider, I'm going to dial in the right strength. And we'll back that off to a less intense strength. And that little shift in color really just further brings out the dynamic range, and I like that. Now, let's take a look at the remaining controls. Glow is going to add glowing areas to the image. And you can adjust the smoothness and the overall brightness. Now, most of the time, I don't use this. But one of the things that's quite useful is you can actually add a negative glow. So if we set this here to a lower amount and play with the smoothness settings, we can actually get a little bit of darkening. And I'm going to warm that up or cool it. Now if we take a look, you see that the glow is just adding a little bit to the shadowy regions. And at a low value here, it's actually quite nice. I suggest keeping this at a lower value so it doesn't start to look over the top. And what you can do is then deal with how that glow subtracts or adds. A negative value is often a nice addition to a stormy sky. Then, take a look at the vignette. You can use the place center command to set it on your subject, or use the sliders to position it. I'm going to start with this being over the top, really dramatic, with no feather. This way I can clearly see it. Now, using the roundness shape, I can adjust this. And you see that we can further refine the overall shape. I stretched it to be more of an ellipse. Let's adjust the size in there. And you see how easy that is. That looks good, right about there. Now, we'll adjust the size and the feather for a very gentle transition. Now, we'll tone down the amount, and it really creates a nice ramping effect that pulls the eye into the subject. Don't overdo it, because that's stereotypical. But at a low value, it can be very attractive and really help drive focus. Additionally, instead of darkening the edges, you can also brighten up the center with inner brightness. And that could be useful to really create more difference between the middle to the outer. So instead of just creating a super dark edge, try a lower value with a subtle lift of inner brightness, and that can really create a nice guide as to where you want the person to look. All right, we've taken advantage of every single filter there, and you may not need them for each image, but I wanted you to see what each did. Here's where we started, and here's where we ended up. And I feel that while I have a slightly more dramatic image, I've still preserved a lot of the nice photorealistic qualities of the original scene, and it matches the details that I saw on this stormy day.